Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about the digital currency and cryptocurrency and what the recent budget that has been submitted yesterday by the Finance Minister of India says about them, what is the stand of government of India regarding their legalization and what are the recent changes that has been made regarding to the taxation of these assets we are going to discuss in this particular video. So let us start and delve deeper into this particular topic. So first of all, if we try to understand the context in which we are discussing today's topic is because as you know that every year government of India publishes or submits union budget that is also called as annual financial statement that tells us about the expenditure and the revenue of the government of India both expected as well as the realized from the last year. At the same time what the government is planning to change uh, as far as the taxation and other economic activity is concerned in the coming years. So that was laid out yesterday by the finance minister, current finance minister Mrs. Nirmala Sitharaman. And in this particular budget, the finance minister had actually talked about two various very important things. The first is regarding something that is called as launch of digital rupee, that is the end of digital currency to be launched in the next year by the Reserve Bank of India with the backing of the union government. At the same time, the government has also made its stand very clear from before that what and how they are going to tax the cryptocurrencies and the other digital assets like NFTs that stands for non-fungible tokens. So now what are these changes? Let us try to understand. But before understanding the changes, we have to understand the three ter terms that are being continuously used in this particular context. One is about digital rupee, other term that is used is called as digital assets and third term we have to use is cryptocurrency. So let us understand the difference among these three similar terms. So when we talk about digital rupee, when we talk about digital rupee, digital rupee is a kind of medium of exchange. Medium of exchange means that means this particular currency that is every currency that is backed or legitimate currency that is backed by government has or act like a medium of exchange. That means you can use this currency for buying any items available in the market. So in that way, digital rupee will also be similar to the physical currency that we are using currently and it will be also be backed by the government in coming times. Then next, it will not be launched by any decentralized agency as compared to cryptocurrency. It will launch by the central bank and in case of India, the central bank is the Reserve Bank of India. So as you know, the Reserve Bank of India is the one who is responsible for publishing all the physical currency of India as well. So digital currency, whenever it will be launched, digital rupee, when it will be launched, will also be launched by the or launched by the Reserve Bank of India. Now the next term that is used is called as digital assets. So what is digital assets? As per the budget statement given by the finance minister, she has said that all such currencies which are not digital rupees or not digital currencies backed by the government, which are lying in the private domain, that can be considered as a digital assets. So the most important characteristic of digital assets is that it is unregulated. The government do not have any backing on them and also have not regulated as of now. Second, if you look at the example digital assets, all the non-fungible tokens can be characterized as a digital assets. Third term that is used frequently is something that we all know or very well aware about is the cryptocurrency. So what is the difference that is going to be between the digital currency or digital rupee being launched by the government of India and the cryptocurrency that is already present in the market. So first cryptocurrency can also be used as a medium of exchange. But the major difference is that as of now cryptocurrency does not enjoy any backing by the government. That means if the value of cryptocurrency deteriorates, government cannot be held responsible by the citizen or public for it. Second, as you know that the digital rupee is published by the central bank that is RBI in the case of India. But in case of cryptocurrencies like bitcoins or ethereum or any other doge coins, they are decentralized in nature. No any particular or individual agencies or individual persons have any right and responsibilities of publishing these digital currencies or the cryptocurrencies. And also at the same time in terms of financial statement, the presence or availability of digital currency in the market do not represent the actual debt and liabilities of the government of India or any central bank in that context. So these are the major differences between three frequently used terms, digital rupee, digital assets and cryptocurrency. So let us try to understand some important points about digital rupee that is government of India planning to bring into the market. So first of all, the digital rupee will be a kind of central bank digital currency. This is also one term used and as per the government's current plan, it will be circulated in the economy 2022-2023 uh, financial year onwards. Second, it will be backed by blockchain technology. So how are bitcoins and all these other cryptocurrencies are also backed by blockchain technology. So the digital rupee will also use the same network. However, it will have a backing of the government. 
third point it will also be a legal tender like all the physical currency notes or coins that is uh, we can say printed by the government of india as a legal tender so in that context digital rupee will also be a similar kind of legal tender issued by a central bank however it will be in a digital form and the most important point that it will be fungible with physical currency what do we understand by the term fungible fungible means that you can very easily or without any problem exchange a digital currency with a physical currency and physical currency with a digital currency that is both digital currency and physical currency will be replaceable with each other they will act as alternative to one another that means if you have one rupees of digital currency then you can easily exchange with the one rupees of physical coin that is what it means by fungible so obviously we have to understand that since the uh, this particular digital rupee that is going to be launched will also be using the help of uh, blockchain technology on its back end so how does blockchain technology actually works so blockchain technology is different from uh, the traditional method of financial transaction for example if you understand how does traditional method of financial transaction work so suppose if you want to buy something online from any merchant for example you want to buy a shirt from indra and then how you will do the financial transaction you will first pick up the shirt and then you will go and pay this and when you click on the option to pay you will be routed to your bank's network and then through your bank's network you can you can send your money to the mintra's uh, mintra's bank account and then mintra will check check it and they will finalize approve your transaction if you have paid the uh, actual amount that is required and then the transaction is said to be completed that means in the traditional method of transaction we have one party that is buyer party then we have one bank network that is buyer's bank then we have a seller's bank so three main parties are there so that is how traditional method of financial transaction works however blockchain is slightly different because it does not use a single or centralized system of financial banking but it uses a kind of decentralized transaction that means whatever transaction you are doing through the blockchain technology it is not recorded at any one place or any one centralized server it is recorded by all the individual nodes or blockchain networks that is available at that particular time so how you do the transaction first you request a transaction then the requested transaction are funneled into a p2p network that is people to people network and broadcast it to each individual computer or node attached with the or associated with the blockchain after that each individual node will see the request and validate the transaction using an algorithm after your transaction can be approved or rejected depending upon the kind of balance you have in your account if a transaction is approved then it is presented as a block and added to a public ledger that means whatever transaction is going on can be recorded in public ledger and it is unedited it cannot be replaced it cannot be deleted after that once the block is added to the existing chain transactions are bound to be or uh, is believed to be completed and it becomes permanent in the data record of blockchain so that is the main difference between traditional method of financial transaction and blockchain method traditional method is centralized undemocratic the blockchain method is decentralized and a much more democratic way of understanding and understanding all these transactions then since the government is planning to launch a digital rupee we have to understand at what why the government thought that there is a need of a digital rupee so first of all the launch of digital rupee since government already has uh, initiated uh, we know the, the, that more and more people should be involved in a digital payment and digital banking so this is just a one step forward and it will also make people's life convenient and security also will secure of digital mode to the user second it can also act since already we know that cryptocurrencies are penetrating the indian market as well and large number of people are currently invested and also using cryptocurrencies for various purposes and that is why the government can also provide a better alternative by launching of digital rupees to the private cryptocurrencies as compared to private cryptocurrencies to the user now why this can be a better alternative so rbi has suggested that the pr present problem with the pr cryptocurrencies lies in the fact that it can be used for money laundering activities as it is non trackable non traceable with the government and there also rbi or, or, or any central bank or any central organization is not associated with the transaction associated transaction of the cryptocurrency second there are also have been instances where the cryptocurrencies has been used for terror financing again because of its unregulated nature and third it is also being used by many indian citizens for the purpose of tax evasion when you buy something or sell something or when you earn something you people are converting into cryptocurrencies and since these are untraceable not lying in the domain of government of india it can be used as a method of tax evasion as well so these are three shortcomings of the private cryptocurrencies which are believed or which are thought to be 
mechanism become better by launching of the distal rupees. However, one other thing we have to understand right now that the exact regulation that how the private rupees or digital rupees will be regulated is still not yet known. And about this, the central bank digital currency that is going to be launched is yet to be finalized. And RBI in the following days or following months is expected to come with a detailed understanding of how they are going to regulate this particular digital rupee. Now, also we have to understand the significance that obviously there was a need of launch of digital rupee in the wake of rising uses of private cryptocurrencies but what is its significance of such steps for the India? So first of all obviously from the consumer's point of view the use of digital rupee will make it much more accessible and user, easier for the people to use because as you know that people are more and more prone and uh, moving toward the use of digital payment. Second it is a digital first efficiency driven and transparency led system because obviously it is much more easier to trace the movement of digital currency as compared to the physical currency. So that is why the whole economy can move more toward the transparency. And third also because India will become one of the few nations which is going to uh, publicly or which is going to uh, publish or we can say launch a digital rupee by the help of government. So it will actually help India in gaining a powerful position in the global economy. So these are three important significances of this particular state of government. Now moving to the second step that government has taken that is with regards to the cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency as of now yet is still not a legal tender in India and the government does not back it. So what does budget is trying to change about that particular point. So first of all the budget has said that any income that any Indian citizens or individuals are generated or generating from the transfer of any virtual digital assets will be taxed flat at the rate of 30%. At the same time, extra 1% TDS, that is tax deducted at source, will also be applicable for such assets. Second, if you look at the importance of this, so obviously the government has taken such a step because, as you know, the valuation of digital currency and cryptocurrencies in India has been continuously rising for the last one decade at least. And as of now, it is believed that around $6 billion worth of value investment is in cryptocurrencies are lying in India. That means the government's revenue sources will increase. And the tax revenue of government from these assets will help in increasing the governmental revenue or also increasing the or will help in uh, fighting the budget deficit of the government. And in case of India, we talk about as of now, the private investors of India alone, they have invested at least worth 45,000 crore in the cryptocurrencies. So that is that will also come under the tax net of government of India, which was not yet. Third point is that by taking certain steps, currently the problem was that there was no clear stand of the government that whether cryptocurrencies are legal or not legal. And by taking that steps of taxation, the co-chairman of blockchain and crypto asset council believe that government has sourced that what is its intent regarding this and it will in future, it might be possible that government will take a business friendly approach with protecting the interest of both consumers as well as the exchequer. So these are the cryptocurrencies related events in the budget. However, there are some positive development. However, some people are there. They have raised the concern regarding the state of the government. So what are the concerns? The first concern is that the move of the government to tax 30% flat on the gains as well as 1% on TDS. However, government has not made any provision that it will be construed as an effort or construed as a step by government that digital assets or cryptocurrency will now, now be legalized. Because if you understand the statement of finance minister Nirmala Sitharaman, she has said that move to tax should not be considered as a step of legitimization of the asset class. And the second concern also rises from the point that government actually is planning to bring a bill that is called as the cryptocurrency and the regulation of official digital currency bill. And the important provisions, one of the most important provisions of this bill is that it wants or aims to prohibit all private cryptocurrencies that are present in market as of now, while it will allow for certain exceptions to promote the underlying technology. In other way, the, government, the bill also says the government should focus or facilitate the generation and circulation of the government backed digital currency and should prohibit all private cryptocurrencies. So in that way, for all the private cryptocurrencies that is existing today or the investment value that people have in that can be a threatened in the future. Apart from that, some other concerns are also there. The first is the government has not made any provisions about compensation or setting up the losses that an investor can have from dealing with the cryptocurrencies against any other source of income. 
what it means that suppose that if you have invested 1 lakh in bitcoin and due to devaluation or due to the de decline in the value of bitcoin your value of bitcoin currently becomes 90000 so you have actually incurred a loss of 10000 on the bitcoin however these losses cannot be supported from your job income you have get bought 9 lakhs rupees so you have to pay tax on full 9 lakh rupees and that 10000 rupees will not be subtracted from this actual uh, income that you have got from the other sources so that is something concerning second it also is not encouraging for investor due to high taxes and that means 30% is due to very high rate of taxation if someone has made 1 lakh rupees on the investment of bitcoin that means 30000 they will have to pay back, pay back to the government so it will not encourage the new investors and most of investors due to this state will try to focus or try to invest their hard earned money into the traditional investment ideas like stocks mutual funds or something like this and also the third concern is that not only the cryptocurrencies but even non fungible tokens which are not taxable anywhere in other, any other countries of the world has been put under the tax net along the cryptocurrencies and the establishment or the Uh, setting up of tax deduction source of 1% of the crypto coins cryptocurrencies also cause problem to intra day traders so these are some of the concerns that has also been raised uh, due to the government of, uh, due, to, due to the budget statement that the government has made so in conclusion what we can understand is that first step the government has taken a very good initiative that is launch of digital rupee so it will certainly give an impetus to the participation of the institutional players in the blockchain space as of now only retail investors and retail players were there who are mainly engaged in the blockchain space but since digital rupee will have a government backing so institutional players also will have more reliance on this and more uh, we can say a trust on this and they will enter into the blockchain space that will overall increase the penetration of blockchain to large number of people and also it will decrease the cost associated with that particular technology however in the second step as far as the cryptocurrencies are concerned in long term taxation issue regarding private cryptos can be brought down after regulation because once more and more number of people are participating and once the establishment of digital currency is done then governments can try to decrease the tax on that so that more and more people can participate and enjoy the investment uh, enjoy the uh, we can say return on the investment in the cryptocurrencies so that is all about this particular issues i think you understood properly that what was the government or the government budget has says regarding two important points digital currency and the cryptocurrency so that's all for today we'll come again soon with new interesting topic till then take care thank you very much